Hello, everyone, and welcome to the 50th episode of Mysticast. I'm your host, Scott Mann, and we have a great show lined up for you today. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Hello, and welcome to your favorite new show, the BSC Mysticast. Hello, and welcome to the ninth episode of Mysticast. Hello, and welcome to this installment of Mysticast. Happy holidays, and welcome to the final episode of this calendar year. Welcome to our 1960s edition of Mysticast. In Living Color. This is Mr. Gas. On January 21st, a march on the Capitol grounds was convened. Participants of the Women's March believe that the current legislature, as well as the Trump administration, are hostile towards the rights of women, immigrants, Muslims, and LGBTQ people. Tom DeLozier has more. On Saturday, January 21st, one day after the inauguration of President Trump, there was a women's rally held on the Capitol Library steps. The crowd estimate was 200 to 500 people. They were everywhere and came from everywhere. It was a dreary, cold day in Bismarck, and we had a chance to talk to one of the protesters. And not everybody uh, is enthusiastic about our current president. Um, I think, you know, I may be in the but I really hope he, he does good for the country. The atmosphere was upbeat and positive for a cold, dreary day. There were men, women, children, and even dogs at this wonderful event. We had another opportunity to talk to another protester. I've been here at the Women's March or Rally in the capital in Bismarck, and um, I'm here because I think that there has been an assault on the people. Uh, and, uh, that I think we need to stand together. We need to stand together. Um, this is this election this time. It's about more than um, it's about more than uh, abortion. After the keynote speakers and some singing and some group chanting. The crowd gathered and marched around the Capitol, leaving the Capitol Library steps. For Mr. Cass, this is Tom DeLosa reporting from Women's March. The Women's March in Bismarck was echoed across the country in many other cities. News media is part of our everyday lives, but as of late, the trust in its accuracy has taken a downturn. We take a look at what has fueled this change. Whether it's printed, televised, shared online, or sent out over radio waves, News media holds an invaluable position in the dissemination of important information. However, in a recent Pew poll from October 18, 2016, entitled Most Americans Trust the Military and Scientists to Act in the Public Interest, news media only won out over business leaders and elected officials, while over 50% polled still said that they had not too much or no confidence in the news media. Bismarck State College student Nicholas Westermeyer had some thoughts on why this might be. Well, I feel like a lot of people are starting to see that, well, people have been seeing it for a long time, but a lot more people are starting to see because it's becoming more mainstream now that a lot of popular news sites aren't unbiased. Westermeyer went on to say that if you were to look at a story reported by either CNN or Fox News, each one would still be different. With 23 years under his belt in the field of news media, ND United Public Affairs Director Tom Gerhardt had some thoughts as well. You know, as, as the fake news phenomenon spread, I think that, you know, it became more difficult to know if what you were reading was true or not. Um, and even before that, though, I think there has to be some onus put on news consumers. And I think that a lot of people read headlines and don't read the entire article. That, that maybe is a whole other conversation, but I think we do have a duty as news consumers and that we're in kind of a get-what-we-deserve situation. Gerhard went on to say that he doesn't believe that anyone in a local market such as North Dakota would set out to falsify a story. Reporting for BSU Mysticast, I'm Adam Pfeiffer. And in other news, there's a new form of entertainment here in Bismarck, indoor football. I went down to the Golf Dome to get more on this story. 
If you're a sports fan here in the Bismarck Manon area, you're in luck. Bismarck now has a brand new indoor football team named the Bismarck Bucks, and their season is starting in just a few weeks. Coach Richard Davis shares his thoughts on this season. Well, my personal excitement level is pretty crazy. I'm pretty fired up. Uh, the excitement level amongst our office, uh, our staff, is every day we wake up ready to go, go to work. You know, We're very excited about this because we know what we're going to put out on the field. We know the kind of young men that uh, are going to be playing here. But all I can tell you is that we've been incredibly well received. Anthony Thrift is a former University of Mary football player who is now part of the Bucks squad and is excited to get back in the game. Um, I was out of the game for maybe a year or two. Um, started getting the itch again when I saw the open tryouts. I saw the team coming into town and just wanted to hit people again, I guess. <laughs> Unexplainable to me just because I'm <laughs> beyond ecstatic, man, just to get ready to put pads on and go play again. The Bismarck Bucks are going to be facing some fierce competition in such a high level of football. Um, you're talking about NFL level uh, guys uh, um, across the board. Uh, we'll have a few guys that didn't get there, wish they would have. We'll have a few guys that have been there and are trying to get back. And I like to think every one of these guys can play and we'll go put it down on the field and, and it'll produce a good product. For Mystic Media, I'm Scott Mann. The Bucks' first game is going to be March 17th at the Bismarck Event Center. After all of the recent snowfall in the Bismarck Man and area, we reached out to Bismarck State's Buildings and Grounds Department to see what sort of effect it's had on their team. With all of the recent snowfall in the Bismarck area, I reached out to Bismarck State College's Chief Building and Grounds Officer, Don Rock, to see what sort of impact it's had on him and his team. We will just get things cleaned up and you get another storm behind it. So that was pretty, I mean, the staff was getting fairly worn out. He also spoke to me about the economic effect that the winter snowfall has had on the buildings and grounds department. Well, for, for this year is quite more expensive. Say for an average week, your fuel costs are run for, your, for diesel and gas. You're looking about $1,000 a week just for fuel cost. Or finally... We're in a really good position right now where we had some warm weather the last week to 10 days and the sidewalks and parking lots cleared up really good and uh, we're back to somewhat normal now. I'm Dylan Bender reporting for Mystic House. Now that the weather is finally starting to warm up, hopefully we can stop worrying about all of this snow. Have you had a chance to check out intramural basketball? Here's what a few Bismarck State College students had to say about it. You know, it's, it's good for uh, some of us old high school athletes that weren't good enough or motivated enough to uh, go play college sports. Um, so it's good for us to get out here and compete, hang with the boys, and uh, just, just go support some other teams. Oh, it's lit. I love it. love coming out here and just showing what I can do, you know. It's kind of my thing. Uh, I think it's a really fun time to get out and play with your friends, and yep. Oh, you know, I normally just come here and watch, but it's fun to come out and support the teams. If you're interested in joining intramural sports, you can contact intramural coordinator Brandon Parents through email or by phone. Cole Romine recently played Resident Evil 7. Here are his thoughts about the game. Resident Evil 7. Okay, bear with me. I'm going to try something new. I'm not really comfortable. This isn't my comfort zone. I'm always talking about music, so give me a break. Before I talk about Resident Evil 7, I kind of want to say that I'm not like the hugest fan of Resident Evil. I admire it, and I played Resident Evil, the first one, the remake, I should say, and I played Revelations 2, and I played Resident Evil 6. Yeah, I played Resident Evil 6. It's actually kind of fun, especially if you get a couple, like a friend, because you can only do two people, but hey, it's a good co-op experience, I think. It's, you know, good couch co-op. You know, get with your friends, play some Resident Evil. It's, it's really action-oriented, but I actually like it because it has a... Don't judge me, it's it's good couch co-op, come on. And it has a T-Rex boss battle in it that's a zombie. <laughs> that 
that's, that's cool. So the game starts off, you're playing as Ethan, and you're basically uncovering this mystery-esque thing because your wife's gone missing, and she left you a video, and you're like, oh, man, I gotta go find her. Don't even call the cops. She's been missing. <laughs> but anyways, he goes to this really creepy place in Louisiana, and shit just hits the fan. That's all I'm going to say, because I don't want to spoil the game for you if you haven't played it, which I recommend go do it, go do it. When the game starts, the atmosphere just picks up, and you, you're just involved in it, and I really love that, and it just starts off really smoothly and creepy, and you're really getting the feel for the controls. They're really, really good tutorial, basically, at the beginning of the game. Another thing I have to mention is that sound design is awesome. You can hear the floors crick and, like people coming from different areas and just kind of on edge the whole time, at least for a good half of the game at least. Gameplay wise, this is basically a Resident Evil game, a standard one, and it even has that storage system that's really awesome, uh, where you have a backpack and you can only have so many slots and some items take up more slots than others. I really dug that. That was super cool that they brought that back because it's kind of fun. You're like, hmm, what should I... Should I use the shotgun and the pistol? Wait, I have a grenade launcher. Should I put that in there instead? And you were kind of just thinking, what's going to happen next? Maybe I should prepare for that. And I really like that. And I also love uh, keys that you can find. And you go in these rooms and they'll have extra items in there. And sometimes they're required to have anyways to progress through the story. But it's always fun to go in those extra rooms anyways. And the boss battles. The boss battles. Oh my god, the boss battles. There are some unique boss battles. I'm not even gonna lie. Like the first real one you get is like it involves a car. That's all I'm gonna say because it is super fun and it was just I clapped with that. I was like, <laughs> well done, game. This is a lot of horror movies like Evil Dead, Texas Chainsaw, and probably some others. Those are the two that I always thought of when I was playing it. Also, The Ring a little bit. The Ring, you know, the videotapes. The videotapes? I have to say though, by like the halfway point, the game starts to dip a little bit. I also have to say the characters are pretty interesting in this game, especially the Baker family, which are the antagonists of the game. Uh, some of the enemies are kind of iffy. I mean, I didn't mind them that much. The molded and some bugs were basically the secondary enemies, which I didn't think was that bad. I mean, for how long the game is, it's only like nine to 10 hours long, so. When you're fighting them, it's not like a super, I don't know, it wasn't really let down for me. I didn't really want to fight zombies. I fight enough zombies, and it was kind of a nice change for me, at least. <laughs> this is my first game review, and overall, I have to say Resident Evil 7 is pretty damn fun for a horror game. And it's probably the like the best way to start this year, and it kind of makes me want to play more horror games. It makes me kind of want to replay it besides the last portion of the game, because it kind of drags down. But anyways... Uh, <laughs> Give this game a score, it would be a nice 8 out of 10, and maybe a 9, because it does have that replayability, and I always love replayability, and it's a really good experience. Try it out, rent it maybe, before you buy it, if you like it enough, buy it, definitely. Anyways, peace. Thanks for watching the 50th episode of Mysticast. We hope you tune in for the next one as well. Well, that's it for this installment of Mysticast. Be sure to check out bscmysticmedia.com for all things Mystic. And so ends another episode of Mysticast. What a great tribute to the 60s. Thanks for watching. That does it for us. See you next time. And don't forget to tune in to BSC's campus radio station, The Mix. That's it for this Mysticast. Be sure to tune in to The Mix, the Mark State College's official radio station. That wraps up our ninth episode of Mysticast. Thanks for watching, and make sure to check us out on YouTube and Facebook. Well, that ends this episode of Mystic Cast. We hope you enjoyed. Don't forget to grab a copy of The Mystician on campus or tune into The Mix on bscmix.com or by using the TuneIn app. We'll see you next time on Mysticast. Mysticast.